Howdy boys and girls, really quick video review of the Wahoo Ticker X heart rate monitor for those who don't like to read my excessively long reviews. Heart rate monitor right? Wrong, it's a lot more. A lot of good features with this, um, so let's rip into them. First one is it records 16 hours of activity which I really like. Um, although it's only calories, distance and time, um, if like me you don't have a, like a Garmin or an Apple Watch or whatever, um, but you still want to record your activity, then this is for you. Status lights. Don't know if that's getting picked up, but if like me you've had a heart rate monitor that stopped working for no apparent reason, having status lights is awesome because at least you know the device is working and the battery is working. And because you've got a red flashing light that tells you your heart rate's been detected, you know the detection's working, and the blue flashing light tells you that it's talking to an iPhone, in this case in my pocket. Um, so that to me is really cool. It really annoys me. I've had two heart rate monitors that died for no reason. I've changed batteries. It's just a pain in the butt. Next thing is the iOS app itself. Version one's really good. Um, it integrates with everything you'd expect. Strava, Strava Run, my um, my well, Runkeeper, my Fitness Pal, Garmin Connect, everything that you probably want. Um, there's a few things wrong with the app, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, it's the device itself is configurable from the app, which is really cool. So you can push updates to the app. Um, it's got everything you expect, analytics, things like steps per, um, steps per meter, so you're running cadence, running smoothness, whole bunch of analytics I didn't really look at or need, but it's all there. The next thing that's really cool about this is the it's firmware based. So over time as Wahoo works out more things they want to push to these devices or people ask for things, they can push them via firmware up updates, which I really like. The next thing is double tap. Double tap can be used in a number of ways you can configure this from the app. You can start, pause, start your activity. You can control music, which is really cool. It's a little bit flaky because you can't see what's going on, but it's there. Probably needs a little bit of improvement. But um, yeah, I really like the concept of double tap. Like me, If you're like me and you like to go for a run, um, and you don't like to have wires or carry a phone to control it, all you need to, to start recording blah, 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 Sorry, is double tap to start double tap to stop. It's a little bit flaky um, for reasons I'll get to in a minute. This thing's dual wireless so it's Ant Plus and Bluetooth so Bluetooth straight to your phone, Ant Plus to your head unit which is really cool so you've got the choice and the, um, you know the flexibility there. Also the detection on this thing or the de detection of this thing is absolutely rock solid. It didn't ever have a problem except in Strava Run. Strava Run did not want to detect this device. The normal Strava app did. Um, Runkeeper did. Everything else detected it, no problems. But for some reason, Strava Run didn't. But apart from that, the detection is absolutely rock solid. There's never, ever been a problem. Okay, there's a few little things that are a little bit niggly about this that need improvement. Hopefully, they can be done by, via firmware. First thing is double tap. Although that's a positive, it's also a little bit of a negative. And the reason for that is it's easy to quickly lose an idea of what state you're in. For instance, let's say going for a run without any other device and you just want to use, use this to record. Now when I was trying to use Strava Run with the device, um, I was double tapping to try and get Strava to detect it and then I realised I didn't know what state I was in, I didn't know if I was recording or not, um, so I needed the Wahoo app to work out if it was recording. That to me is a pain in the bum because you're using the same tap sequence or number of taps to start and pause, it's easy to quickly lose an idea of where you are. So to me that could easily be fixed with single tap to start, double tap to pause or Two, two taps to start, three taps to pause, whatever it is, that could be fixed probably by a firmware, or um, the status lights could be harnessed to so that um, a special sequence or whatever can be used to tell you if you're recording or paused. Next thing is the app itself. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the app I didn't use, but one thing I, I was trying to get working which doesn't is stop activity. So to stop recording on this, you can um, pause, double tap to pause, take it off, and it, double, it um, starts it's got an internal um, vibration mechanism, so it vibrates to say it's stopped recording. Or there's a button in the app which ostensibly you can stop, um, press to stop. That didn't work for me. I was pressing, pressing, pressing. Didn't stop. That needs fixing. Um, apart from that, though, the app's really, for version one's really quite good. It integrates with everything you expect, as I mentioned. Next thing is in the app, you can configure this and configure a few things on it, but it's not clear in the app what you're actually pushing to the device. So you might change um, certain configuration or, or analytics or stuff to push to the device, like seven minute, there's a seven minute workout function and, and a bunch of other stuff, but it's not clear 
that you're actually pushing it to the device um, so that you don't really know what, the, what context the analytics or the, or the configuration is. Also, there's no actual button to press, to, um, like a button or a feature to push to the device or save to the device. So you change it and that's kind of, I guess in the background it's saving, um, like auto-saving, but you don't know that it is. And I really don't like um, user, user interface uncertainties or like I don't like unresolved tension. So, I'm, well, has that been saved or not? So that's something that needs to be fixed in version 2 of the iOS app. And bearing in mind these shortcomings might not be in the Android app if there is one. I don't know if there is one. Another thing is having to have another app. Now the Wahoo app's really good. If you just want this device, you want to go and run, um, maybe you're not a cyclist and you just want to be able to record your calories and use the Wahoo app and you want to live inside the Wahoo app, that's cool. But I've got Garmin Connect which I use on and off, um, Strava, Runkeeper, and the reason I use Runkeeper is because it integrates with um, with the music on my iPhone very, very well. Um, and also my fitness pal to record food, um, food input and calories, exercise the output. Um, so I question the need for another app. Now I can see why they built one, because integrating with something existing would have been a real pain in the bum. But it's, you know, it's something to consider nonetheless. If you're happy to have another app and use it on and off, that's fine. Um, another thing is you can double count calories. So... I've got um, the Wahoo app uploads to Strava and it also connects to MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal also connects to Strava so the, the activities on this can get to MyFitnessPal and Strava in two different ways. So I was finding that I was getting um, activities counted twice, so I was getting double counting of calories burnt and stuff like that. Minor issue, bit of a pain to you know ongoing management. Another thing is this seems to not record calories accurately. So I mentioned this in my lengthy um, article review. I was getting a really big disparity between calories reporting to the Garmin and then um, later uploaded to Strava. So, and we're talking, you know, like 2,000 kilojoules versus 8,000 kilojoules. It's a huge disparity and I can't really work out why that happened. I might be missing something simple, but that's a big difference nonetheless. So that might be something that needs to be fixed. Another little bugbear I had was um, the first time I used this, it wasn't sending live um, or cumulative cal calories to my Garmin 500. Um, and then the second and third rides, I was using Garmin 810, and it was working fine, and then back to my Garmin 500, and it was working fine. So since then, I haven't had a problem. So maybe it was something I hadn't paired it right, although it was reporting um, heart rate, but not calories. So there was something a bit weird going on, but I haven't had that problem since. Lastly, would I recommend this? Well, it's 135 Australian dollars. I paid for mine, so it's not reviewing a free product. Um, I would get this again. The reason for that is I like to run for cross training for cycling and I want to be able to record my activity because I kind of like to approach it from a scientific methodology to try and get my weight down and measuring food in and, and your calories expended. So, and I also don't want to buy another like an expensive Garmin watch or an Apple watch just for running or whatever. So for me, this is a really useful product. If if you're like me, you'll probably find it useful too. The tool there too. Sorry, there are cheaper products on the market, but you know if you've got the cash spare, um, and you know the use case for you is similar to me, then highly recommend a really reliable product and will only get better in time. Especially all the shortcomings I mentioned. No doubt that Wahoo will probably fix that up via firmware and fix the iOS app. So this one gets a thumbs up from me. Make sure to check out the review link to in the um, video notes below and also subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos and also to make sure you're in the loop for giveaways. See you next time.